in this review, we're going to do the Hoka Arai. Now, this shoe in one of the in one of the other uh, reviews I've done, um, a gentleman had said that the Arai were more like the Cliftons, the orig original Cliftons. So I had to give them a try. Okay, so the Arai. Uh, let's do the weigh-in on the Rai. It's 10.4 ounces. This is for a 10 and a half shoe, 10.4 ounces, which is not not a bad weight. It it's not uh, is not no eight ounces, but it's not a bad weight. Let's look how that compares to other uh, shoes. So this would be okay. Now this is interesting too, and which we're going to go over this. This this is for the uh, regular is 10.4 for 10 um, 10 and a half, 10.4 ounces. So the this is the wide the Hoka Rai wide um, and it's 10.7 ounces so it's three ounces heavier which is not bad you know for a wider shoe so let's look how that stacks up against other shoes so this is the Tesla shoe it's a slip-on great for 5k's you slip it on look how light that is 7.4 ounces for 10 and a half amazing let's go over here to the uh, 400 this is the shoe this is the Skechers shoe. It's the 400. It's it's one of my favorite out of their lines. Um, I use that uh, for 5Ks. It's super cheap. Um, doesn't last very long, but it's it's very lightweight. Look, 8.6 ounces, and uh, has a it's, it's, the cushioning is great. And I love the upper. No over no welds that are going to rub on your toes or anything. So great shoe for 5Ks. Uh, and I've done a review on that. You can look at. Uh, okay, so here's the original Hoka Clifton. This is the Hoka Clifton one. As they got Hoka Clifton one, two, the two and three uh, started getting heavier, but the Hoka, original Hoka Clifton is only 8.5 ounces. Um, I sort of I stopped kind of I stopped having to wear this because uh, it, the the front toe box is too tight and it would rub, uh, push on my toe and cause some kind of a weird tingling sensation. Uh, so I had to stop using that shoe. Um, but but it, look how light it is 8.5 ounces. Um, and then now if you go up to Brooks Nine, this is a, a really stable shoe with lots of cushioning. Um, but look at the 12 ounces. Wow, big shoe. Okay, so let's take actually take a look at the shoe now. Okay, here's the Arai. Now, uh, cool looking colors. Look at this. I put the, I wore these with some jeans one day, just to kind of uh, see how they felt, and um, had a lot of people say, "Man, that's a good looking shoe." And they have another color. I forget the scheme, but it's more of a uh, the shoe is more orange or reddish orange. Um, I think that would be a, a good looking one too. So this is um, this color and the other three colors uh, come in just regular size. Uh, um, but they have a wide, but guess guess what? The wide only comes in the, uh, and you may like this color, but I, I think it's an ugly color myself. Um, but the wide only comes in this brown looking color, uh, which is unfortunate. So, and, and the wide is the only one I, I can use because I had the same problem with the um, Hoka Clifton, the original ones, with the toe box being too uh, narrow. And these are the same thing. I ran in these a little bit and I had to immediately stop because this pushes, this side pushes in on my toes. And for some reason, as I'm running, it causes some kind of weird sensation on my little toe um, up, like it's some kind of nerve problem. Um, but if I, if, I wear, if I wear this one, the wide, um, I didn't have that problem. So uh, so this was the one I actually ran. Um, I ran nine miles in it uh, once around White Rock Lake there in Dallas. And uh, it was cushiony. And it was it was nice uh, ride. As you can see, uh, we're going to look at the midsole first. Um, get a close-up of this. You can see. It's, I would I would say this is a medium. So if you uh, leaning more towards soft, so if you had soft, medium, and hard, this would be like a medium. Look, see that? Um, and you can see it's a, it's a little more cushiony. Uh, let me show you the difference. Between Okay, so this this is the original Hoka Clifton one, and the Cliftons that you can tell they they're super soft. So the Rye would be like a medium uh, midsole, and the Clifton series would be like uh, ultra soft. See that? Which is good. Now this is something uh, uh, it, that you're going to find interesting. And I found interesting also. Uh, let's get back to the Rye. Um, so the Rye little uh little stiff you don't you don't see a whole lot of movement there um, and then it has the medium cushion which i like the uh, i did like the original hoka the real soft one but i found these to be super soft too and uh um I did. so you know one of the big things um 
that the array brings to the table is the uh, see it has it says dynamic stability now this is their stability shoe so this would definitely be for um i mean it could be for any runner a neutral runner um, or if you over pronate or pronate um, this would be for you and and the reason um, they made it like that is for, especially you can see it's called their um, j design um, see how this it looks like a j uh, so for people who pronate like if they if you run and, and you your your heel kind of rolls in and you can tell if you look at your running shoe and if it's wore on the inside um, then this would be a good stability shoe for you also um, because this is made it has like a higher density cushion as you can see right there um, so it, it keeps you your your uh, ankle from rolling in so it kind of keeps you more stable so when you hit um, you don't hit and roll in it keeps you more stable it's not so much cushion where it lets your um, your ankle roll in which you know can cause injuries over time so it's would be considered a, a good st uh, stability shoe and this stability shoe is, is pretty light you've seen the weight at the beginning uh, just a little over 10 ounces so that's so lots of cushion good stability uh, yeah I mean I really don't think you can go wrong with this shoe I ran nine miles. At the end of the nine miles, uh, what I had found was the um, my left hip and then my right growing was kind of hurting at, uh, towards the end of that run, um, and I and I contributed that to the same problems on longer runs with these really high cushion shoes. You know, it takes some time to get used to because you're going to affect different parts of your body. So like if it's real springy and cushiony and a lot of uh, cushion there, then it's going to put um, uh, more stress uh, on your hips um, and, you, you know, your upper body, uh, your buttocks. Um, so what's interesting, so I stopped at the nine miles and took these, I, I was actually wearing the wide. I took it, I stopped at the nine miles and took these off. And then I put on, I had some uh, ASIC uh, Contend 4s. And they're, they have about the same cushioning, maybe just a little harder, but about, about the same. These are wides also, they come in wide. Um, so I put these on and that as you can see they don't have as, as much cushion and it's a little a little harder um so my hips my hips stopped hurting and the growing stopped hurting so i was able to run another lap which was another nine miles um but my knees uh started hurting a little more and the bottom of my feet right here so that's interesting how you if you get a thicker cushioning um it's going to affect more of your upper body it seems like and if you get a harder cushioning it's going to affect uh you know more of your knees it can affect different areas or more of you know the bottom of your foot um so I, if you look at a lot of the uh the olympian marathon runners uh and you look at their shoes they usually have uh, harder material even harder than this and less material uh, so it's interesting how they they run with less less is more or, or less is better for them um, so I, I think that's something that you're going to have to you know work through try to find the shoe that fits you the best um, and some people again um, this like this particular shoe doesn't have a lot of arch some shoes have more arch and some people like that it really helps them um, so a lot of times you just have to try on different shoes and once you kind of get one that you know that you have feels the best and you have less injuries or less um, soreness then stick with that one and your body the muscles that need to will develop over time and get stronger um, so you kind of have to find you know get that shoe that you like and then stick with it and just kind of you know work through it and your body will kind of adapt to that shoe um, okay so let's get back to the awry um, so it's a little so, so yeah, the, uh, there is a lot of rubber on the bottom. The shoe's going to last a long time, and, and the price isn't bad for 130. Um, so you can see how much uh, rubber they have in, in different spots. So it should last you a long time. Uh, the upper is is pretty breathable. I didn't really have any. My foot wouldn't sweating too bad or anything. Uh, they have the flat shoelaces. Um, the tongue is pretty padded. Um, no problems there, and and you're. And they do a really good job of hooking your foot in there real tight. Um, a, a lot of them are doing a good job with that on a little hook there to pull the shoe on. So I would have to say uh, aesthetically a good looking shoe. If you, if you are not getting the uh, wide, I don't know why they only have the wide in this ugly brown. But um, yeah, if you're, if you're going to get one and you like that a lot of cushion, uh, yeah, I definitely would say it would be up with the Clifton um, or even surpassing it. 
uh, in a lot of ways, so, uh, especially the, the midsole being a little firmer, I think is better. And plus they give you the option for a wide, which they don't give you that option in the Clifton. So yeah, I'd give it a, uh, yeah, definitely. Um, if you're starting out running or, or needing something with a little more cushion, uh, yeah, definitely a great shoe to get. I would give it a thumbs up. Also, as always on the uh, Clifton's, um, or with the Hoka shoes, if you don't like it, uh, when you receive it, it comes with a, um, uh, mm -hmm. Um, just put the shoe back in the box with the RMA, put the sticker on the box, and then just ship it back. They'll receive it, send you an email saying they received it, and then they'll put the money back into your account or you know whatever your credit card um, within 10 days. They, they do an amazing job on that. They let you run in their shoes uh, for 30 days, so you can actually try them out, see if you like them. If you don't, then you can ship them back and you know uh, get your money back, or you can get another pair, whatever you, whatever you like. But... If you have any questions about the Rye or any issues, uh, definitely feel free to uh, feel free to um, leave a comment. I'd love to hear. I like to hear y'all's comments. Um, but yeah, this is the shoe I've been wearing for five Ks. Is the Skecher uh, Go Run Four Hundred? And what's interesting is I've seen a lot of nurses wear these shoes. That was interesting because um, they're so cushiony and. Uh, and so easy to wear and lightweight it's just a, i think this is one of the, like i say sketcher's best running shoes uh, out there um so again run free run proud take care